what's up there, Neo Surfers? Today, as promised, and as a follow-up to my How a Turbocharger Works video, I'm gonna show you how you can make a boost leak tester uh, to check for any boost leaks on your turbocharged engine. Okay, so the whole idea behind checking for boost leaks is that you want to introduce compressed air into the side of your compressor wheel. Basically, you want to make a closed uh, system, including all the hoses and the piping that carry compressed air from your turbo to your intake or throttle body and then you want to introduce compressed air and then listen and look for leaks that way if anything is leaking uh, you can uh, just you know fix the problem as you can see here though our uh, turbo is kind of buried down there and the, the hose that comes out of the turbo on the compressor side is very hard to get to so what we're going to do is actually start from here so we're going to be blocking off from we're going to remove this this tube that comes from our air filter box we're going to block it off from here and then on the other side, we're going to remove that hose that goes to our throttle body and we're going to block it off there too. A lot of people like to leave this hose on though because the throttle plate in here is going to kind of block the compressed air from escaping into the intake manifold in the engine. But it's, the compressed air is still going to sneak past it. So you're going to be hearing a hissing noise while you're trying to look for or listen for a boost leak down here. And I just like to block it off so you don't hear that. That way you're not confused and uh, you have an easier time finding any boost leaks. Alright, so what we want to do next is to loosen this clamp and then remove this uh, air hose from our air filter box. There we go. Same thing on the throttle body side. There we go. Alright, what you want to do next is to get your uh, tape measure and then measure the diameter of these two hoses. As you can see, we got about two and a half on this one and we got about two and three quarters on this one. Alright, next you want to go to your local Home Depot or uh, hardware store and then get two PVC caps or PVC end caps and you can find these in the plumbing section of Home Depot and you want to make sure you get the right size or as close to the measurements we just made on those two uh, air tubes as possible. Uh, you also want to get one of these male plugs. These are for your uh, quick connect connects for your air compressor uh, air lines and these male plugs, this end has to be threaded. Okay. Next you want to get your drill and then you want to pick a drill bit that's just a little bit smaller than the threaded side of the quick connect coupler for our air compressor line and uh, in our case this is going to be a half inch drill bit. And then you want to drill a hole on the plug that you're going to be putting on the air hose that's coming out of our air filter box. Now you don't want to go too fast because this PVC could melt if you really drill fast, okay? And then you won't get a good seal when you go to uh, put in the, the plug. Next you want to get some RTV silicone, preferably uh, ultra gray, but I don't have any ultra gray right now so I'm going to be using black RTV silicone. And then you want to put some uh, on the threads of your uh, quick connect coupler. Alright, next we're going to start screwing this in. First start it by hand and then by ratchet to get it in there all the way. Okay. That's good enough. Alright now word of caution, you don't want any RTV silicone find its way into your uh, intake manifold and ruin your sensors and whatnot. So go ahead and wipe down any of this uh, residue that's on this. Alright so next we're gonna plug up this hose on the throttle body side but this PVC end cap that I got was a uh, it's a little too small for this so what I did was I uh, just got some painters tape and rolled it around this a couple times now it's a little bit bigger so it should fit much more snugly like that and next we're just gonna tighten this clamp down as much as we can uh, just don't break it okay <laughs> now I should warn you though, when we're going to be introducing compressed air into this, we're not going to go past uh, 12 psi for this test, but even 12 psi, once the pressure builds up, if this thing becomes loose, this end cap becomes loose here, it's going to pop out with a lot of force and, it's, <laughs> and if it hits you in the face, it's definitely going to do some damage. Or maybe even if it doesn't hit you in the face, maybe it hits uh, your hood or ricochets and hits your uh, top of your fender and something, it's going to damage something. So. You want to make sure you don't get hurt while doing this test, okay? So, also, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to be pointing this down here. Alright, next we come on this side, but uh, something I forgot is that we need to block off this tube as well. 
this hose. Otherwise, compressed air is gonna travel through this intake tube through here to our to the top of our engine. Actually, our whole engine is gonna become pressurized, and we're gonna be hearing all sorts of hissing noises, and <laughs> it's gonna be very distracting. So, what I'm gonna do is just remove this clamp, remove this hose, and then I'm gonna try to see if I can find anything to plug it up. There we go. All right, so here's something uh, perfect and perfectly dangerous that I found that we could fit in here. <laughs> this uh, half inch to three eighths uh, ratchet adapter. And this is the perfect size here. If this thing ever pops out of here due to high pressure, it could really do some damage. But after I tighten this down, I'm actually gonna put the ratchet on here. Then I'll stick it underneath just in case it pops out. You know, you would have some drag and they won't go anywhere. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna push this down here, just in case this thing pops out, it just falls this way and won't come flying at my face. All right, again, I think I need to mention that I'm doing this for entertainment purposes only. This is not a proper way to do a boost leak test. You need professional equipment to do it. And if you do it like my way, there's a chance that you could seriously get hurt or injured. Okay, so again, this is for entertainment purposes only. All right, next we need to uh, block off this hose as well. I'm gonna be using a pair of needle nose pliers and I'm gonna be putting a rag here so I don't damage it when I go and put this needle nose pliers on. Like that. All right, last but not least, our adapter here. We'll need to put this in and tighten this clamp down as much as we can. All right, now we're pretty much ready to start putting compressed air in there, but here's another very, very, very important step is that we come to our uh, air pressure regulator on our compressor side and we turn it down all the way, make sure this thing goes to zero. And then we're gonna start very, very slowly turning this back up. And we're gonna first build pressure, build five PSI of pressure in here. And then we're gonna attach our uh, airline to our adapter. Now the trick is though, and once this pressure starts building up like this, you need to let it sit for 30 seconds until it, you get a, the absolute correct reading because it could take up to 30 seconds for this dial to show you the actual uh, pressure that's in the line. As you can see, we're about 5 PSI, so we're going to do our first test at 5 PSI. All right, now we just get our uh, quick connect and attach it to our adapter. And now this is going to slowly build up pressure. Make sure you, again, you point this away from your face, all right? All right, so here's a closer look at our, uh, our system, our setup that we got here. Now, if you, basically what you wanna do is just to listen for hissing noises. And if you listen closely to our uh, setup here, you'll probably hear two things. First, uh, the sound of our uh, oil turning around. That's because uh, some of this Compressed air seems to be making it still to our crankcase and pressurizing our crankcase. So what we're gonna do just to be on the safe side is to open our uh, oil cap to let some of it out. It's uh, not excessive, but you wanna be on the safe side and open that up. And the other thing is that you still can hear a hissing noise. A hissing noise that is probably a boost leak and Actually, I've checked it already and it's coming from underneath the car. So I'm gonna raise and support the car and take you down there and show you where it's coming from. So now we're underneath the car on the passenger side and you can actually hear this hissing noise pretty loud and clear here. And if you inspect further, now this is a tube that comes out of our turbo on the compressor side. And there, it's leaking from around this hose. Now this, either this clamp is loose or this hose has started to, to break down and now it's leaking. So first, I'm gonna see if I can tighten this clamp and get rid of this boost leak. And that, something else you can use to pinpoint your boost leaks is uh, soapy water. If you get some soapy water and spray it around a suspected area, a lot of times you can see the bubbles. Well, in our case, since this is positioned slightly in an awkward spot, we're not gonna be able to see the bubbles, but you can hear the hissing noise change. And that indicates that you found your boost leak. All right. Now our boost leak is on the side of this thing, actually on the other side, so. All right. 
<laughs> Alright, that was easy. This clamp was just loose and it looks like a hose is in good shape. It was just a clamp that was loose. Alright, so we're back up top again listening for any other hissing noises and I don't really hear anything. But another tip I can give you is that if you can't just grab the whole of these uh, hoses that are part of your uh, boosting uh, system and just wiggle them around, especially this one that comes out of your intercooler on this car. You could sometimes, you get leaks here and then uh, you won't hear them until you wiggle it around. Alright, so next we're going to bump up our pressure to about 10 to 12 psi. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, just to make sure we actually get that 10 to 12 psi is first we're going to disconnect our quick connect coupler here. So we come back to our compressor side, do the same thing we did to get to 5 psi. Alright, here we go. We're about 10 psi now. Next, uh, we reattach this coupler. Again, make sure these things that could pop out at you are pointing away from your face. Alright, so at 12 psi we found another leak. Now, this is not a boost leak, but this is a, this would be considered a vacuum leak. Since it's on this air intake tube that comes from our air filter box. And this leak is after our MAF sensor, which is part of the, our uh, air filter box housing. So this leak needs to be uh, taken care of. Now, since we didn't really hear it at 5 psi, I don't think a lot of air is sneaking into the system, but still something to go on the shopping list and for me to look at. Now the problem is, though, if I get my hand off of this, uh, the hissing noise is not going to let me listen for other hissing noises, but, you know, I can just kind of sneak a peek around the other side of the engine while my uh, hand is on here. And I've already done so and I can't really hear any other leaks both on top and on the bottom of the engine. So I do believe that the only boost leak we had was that uh, air pipe that was coming out of our turbo and going to the bottom of our radiator which we took care of with just uh, tightening that hose clamp. Alrighty, that's all there is to making a boost leak tester. So again, be very cautious when you're doing this test. You know, you may not think 12 PSI is a lot of pressure, but when it's released all of a sudden and you have one of these things come out flying at your face, you know, if it makes contact, <laughs> it's going to do a lot of damage. Alright, so with that said, I hope this video helps you put out there. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.